Okay, today's reaction is some people should really not have kids by DIFO. Okay, let's see what's going on. Originally, this video will be in the description down below, so check it out for yourselves. Share, like, subscribe if you're new. And uh, let's get into this video and see what's up. But for real, for real, for real, for real, some people should not have kids. Seriously. If you know you're not fit to be a parent, stay the heck. Matter of fact, make sure you strapped up. That's for anybody. Stay strapped up. Because we don't need any more idiots creating kids that end up turning into real pieces of crap in the future. We don't need no more of that. World's already messed up as it is. We don't need to continue to make more mistakes. All right, let's get into this video. Cause we don't really, we really don't need more monsters in this freaking world. We don't need any more. We got enough in this world. We got enough. All right, let's go. I don't know why people that don't even know me hate me. Hmm. Okay. She lied about having cancer, and after getting exposed, she makes an apology video, reading off a script from a cyber bully pretending to be a suicidal to. Garner even more sympathy. Miss Dirty Bird. Wow. Okay. Weird name. You'll never be welcome in the Rocket League community. This chick is lying about having cancer? And she and she's wondering why Nick. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> You're really wondering why people are getting mad at you, bro? You're really wondering. Let's see. Let's really, let's, let's really talk about it. You are faking having cancer to gain sympathy, a following, and I don't know what else people get out of it, but yeah, this, you're, you're dumb, bro. There's tons of people out here that actually have cancer, and you're making a mockery out of it, bro. You're disrespecting the folks with actual with actual cancer. You're oh man, that's terrible. I've been it's been a weird trend of people faking Ill illnesses, people faking mental health issues, people really got done having people really faking all types of different stuff. I didn't think it was this freaking bad. Oh god, there was even a dude that freaking fake having a um multi personality disorder. What do you get? What do you gain from pretending for pretending that you're having a mental disorder and are having a very severe illness? What do you what really? What do you gain from that? Because if people find out that you faked it, then you're screwed. You're gonna be made a laughing stock. You're gonna be outcast. You. There's nothing to gain from that. Right, let's get back into this video, bro. She really out here crying, bro. Man, stop the crocodile too. tears. Is that why I hate me too? I know that no one's gonna want to listen. I mean, really. <laughs> all right, fellas, welcome back. Bro, all these YouTubers, well, mostly female YouTubers, always come out with these goddamn apology videos, and they're always freaking crying. Bro, everyone sees people cry all the time when they when they know they messed up, and they're crying to make an apology video to get everyone back on their side. Everyone's seen them too many times. It's old freaking news if you really want people to actually see that you're genuine stop with the cap stop with the crocodile tears because people will see through that junk it's too easy everyone does it everyone does it 
No one believes the Crocodile Tears apology videos anymore. No one believes in them no more. Unless they're simps or super idiots and people that can't really, are not really aware of anything. And can't like differ from people that's faking it and people that's actually being genuine. People like this, this, this makes me sick, bro. Another week has passed here on the internet and as per the usual arrangement, there is no shortage of stupid shit to make fun of. Let's just get right into it. We've got a lot to unpack today. If you are new, make sure you subscribe right now or else you have a very high chance of having a small dick. And also turn on your goddamn notifications so that you can be a part of the buzz every single time a new video goes live. And last but not least, of course, watch the entire video. Don't be a bitch. All right, fellas, we'll get back to the cancer faker in just a moment here. But first, let's talk about something that is equally or perhaps even more terrible than that, if you can imagine. TikTok star Digital Princess arrested in Florida. The TikTok star, Twitch streamer, and adult entertainer. My God, imagine your mother, okay, being those three things. Name three worst things that you could possibly be, especially have your mother be, my God. I don't even know which one is the worst anymore. We'll probably see after this video, but uh, reportedly arrested in Lee County, Florida and charged with child neglect. According to the police report, the incident occurred on August 24th. Neighbors allegedly found her son alone in the yard and crying, so they called the police. When police arrived, her front door was open and the TikTok star was nowhere to be found. So as we usually do with these case studies here on the channel, here are some pictures of her. I've never heard of this person. Have you guys ever heard of her? Looks like your average, typical Twitter slash social media clout chasing girl, covered in tattoos, probably tweets about pegging dudes for clout. I mean, you know how it goes. You all know the type. I've never heard of her, but I saw she's got over 2 million followers on TikTok. I guess that's probably like the equivalent of having, I don't know, 500K, maybe a million on YouTube. So decently well-known person that we make famous, unfortunately. Also, post-production, me here, I found this after I made the video, fellas. She's got a page on, well, this website here. I'm sure everyone in the comments is familiar with the UI. You can't even make this shit up anymore. Happy research. Police were able to make contact with her after finding her phone number on paperwork in the home. She stated to police that she was about six minutes away from the residence. Upon arrival, police noted she was wearing a black mini skirt and full makeup. She showed police a bottle of Tide laundry detergent that she said she left the house to purchase. Hey guys, I've got a question out there. Who the fuck gets completely ready to go out to buy laundry detergent at 10 o'clock at night, right? Like, have you guys ever lied to the police before? Name me one time, like a time, that's ever worked out well. It didn't work out well here. She told the police that she put her son to bed at 10.15 and left to go to 7-Eleven to get the laundry detergent. She explained her job as a TikTok social media influencer. Fucking cringe, dude. I would never tell anyone I did that. I would never even tell anybody I did YouTube. It, it, it's all just so, like, embarrassing. Said that she moved to Florida from Colorado due to harassment and stalkers and also said she has no support system in Florida and that is why she had to leave her son home alone. I just can't imagine, fellas, how fucking stupid you have to be to think that it's a good idea to tell the police that you had to leave your house at 10 o'clock at night. You had to leave your son home alone so you could go buy laundry detergent. Since when is that an urgent thing to have? I, I mean, if you're going to lie, at least pick the fucking lie believable. This is a new level of stupid we've never even seen before. So I was looking on Twitter, there's actually like police reports that you could download online. This person tweeted some of them out here. Here's her mugshot next to it. And then she went on TikTok and made a video basically saying, don't believe everything you read on the internet, which as a general rule of thumb is true, but I think when there's police documents to back it up, you can kind of believe it. I tried to find her Twitter, her TikTok, her Instagram. Everything is on private now, so you guys tell me. When somebody on social media puts everything on private, do they or do they not have something to hide? Do they not have something to be embarrassed of? Something they don't really want people to come looking at them for? Police were suspicious of her explanation due to her attire and because the laundry detergent was half empty. They then read her her Miranda rights and began to question her. They asked if she had a receipt to prove that she recently purchased the laundry detergent, but she said she paid in cash and did not have a receipt. Then police asked if she would show up on the 7-Eleven security footage, at which point she began to hesitate and advised that she wanted to be truthful. Nice. Great job. You backed yourself into a corner, you lied, and now you're in big fucking trouble. Allegedly, 
right? Allegedly. So she finally comes clean and then said that she put her son to bed and then traveled 11 miles to go to a friend's house. A friend's house. Quotes, guys. We all know what that probably means, right? She said that the laundry detergent was not recently purchased but had been in the trunk of her car and she actually did have a support system in Florida with relatives living close by. But then she explained to police that her anxiety made her lie and she felt as though she needed to provide a cover-up story to get out of trouble. Oh my God. You know what's crazy? Twitter is not real life and you can't just pull the mental health card and get out of trouble with the law, okay? That might work with teenagers and Gen Z on TikTok, but don't, don't fucking pull mental health cards on the police. My anxiety. Give me a break. Do not ever be like her, fellas. If you're a parent, this is about one of the most dangerous things you can do. Her four-year-old or five-year-old, however old the kid was, who I read was supposedly autistic, not out of her house at 10 o'clock at night. Anything could have happened there. And if this is true, oh my then DCF gosh. should get involved. Watch yoga videos ad-free and practice uninterrupted. Try our student play. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Grilled Chicken Club is the wonderfully marinated and juicy ch- Let's go back to this story here. Twitch streamer apologizes after admitting she faked cancer diagnosis. Like, who is even worse out of these two people? I don't even know. I think the first one is probably worse because a real-life child was actually in danger. Mm -hmm. But this is just straight fucking scummy. Miss Dirty Bird is a Rocket League streamer. Content creator has now offered a formal apology for a second time. I don't know why people that don't even know me hate me. Or last few months. Really? You don't? Really? I swear, people that do something stupid always have amnesia, bro. Followers have been tracking her quote developments. The claims were first acknowledged on a live stream with her sister. Anything for clout, guys. I mean, it's just anything at this point. There's no rules anymore. I, I don't even know why you think this would give you clout in the first place. Having this condition is, is not a clout checklist item. It's not. It's a fucking tragedy when it actually happens. So to use something like that in order just to get attention, like, you just got to be a different kind of scumbag to do this. Earlier this year, her sister took to Twitch after receiving information of Miss Dirty Bird claims. I wanted to address my sister's stream today, her having cancer. I don't think she hasn't said anything to any of us. Expressing her over the comments, she said, it hurts me that she has said this. In the stream, she also mentions how everyone in her chat still thinks she has cancer. The first oh, mention of her alleged diagnosis was in January, claiming to have brain cancer. Since then, more information has come to light prompting the streamer to speak directly about the allegations. So, at least there's one normal person in this family. I mean, if you had a sibling who was doing something like this, I don't know why it took her, whatever, almost eight months, nine months, in order to out her for it, but at least she did it. I would say I'm surprised by this, but at this point, I, I can't even tell a lie anymore. I'm really not even surprised by it, so. I'm sure there will be much more to come. This is not the first time that someone has been caught doing this, and I certainly don't think it'll be the last. And our final topic of the day, fellas, <laughs> speaking of cringe Twitch streamers, we had the hashtag day off Twitch happen. Streamers on Twitch take a day off to bring attention to issues of hate and harassment. A number of channels on the popular streaming platform Twitch are going dark on Wednesday as streamers participate in hashtag a day off Twitch. The walkout hopes to bring attention to the ongoing hate and harassment issues that have plagued the platform for the last several weeks. According to The Verge, here's the graphic that was going around. I am taking a day off Twitch in solidarity with marginalized creators under attack by botting and hate raids. So I guess this hate raid thing has been a new thing that has happened. I've only seen like one or two clips going around that have shown this, but apparently it's going on all the time. It says, we are asking Twitch to, one, hold a roundtable discussion with affected creators to assist in the creation and implementation of more proactive and comprehensive tool sets to combat abuse on their streaming platform. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading a work email here. A lot of buzzwords in here. Creation, implementation, proactive, comprehensive tool sets, roundtable discussion. Like, what exactly is it asking for? I don't know. It's just words. It's just jargon. Number two, create proactive protection to be implemented immediately, enabling creators to select account age of prospective chatters and allow or deny income. So 
at least that one is a little bit more specific. There's already a setting where you can say that your stream is whatever, for 18 plus, like adults only. So I don't know what age you want to do. Like, do you literally just want to say if you're under 14, you can't come in, or if you're 15 or 16, you can't come in, but 14 is yes? I would imagine that a lot of the little shits that are coming into these raids and spamming the N-word in people's chats are probably under the age of 18, so I, I don't know. I feel like 18 or not 18 is probably enough, but apparently not. And then the other thing was to allow or deny incoming raids. So, like, okay, that's an actual real idea, a specific idea. I don't know who's going to deny a raid, because you typically probably don't know who it's coming from, unless it's one of your friends, but... Okay, no, okay, I'll, I'll go along with that one. Remove the ability to attach more than three Twitch accounts to one email address. Currently, hate raiders can use one email account to register unlimited addresses. Don't know if that's true. If it is, I guess that will be a, a, a decent change to implement. I, I mean, if you really wanted to continue doing this, if you're one of the little shits, that is, you could just spam make Gmail addresses, but whatever. And then the last one is provide transparency into the actions being taken to protect creators, the time frame for implementing those tools, and the involvement of the Twitch Safety Advisory Council. So kind of like the first one, pretty big. There's actually not much substance in that box. So I grabbed this screenshot at like, I don't know, 11 a.m. on the day of the, the Twitch blackout. And as you can see, nobody's really fucking participating. For every one streamer that was out there on Twitter talking about how they're not going live that day, like, I mean, look at all these viewers. This is some of the highest viewership I've seen on Twitch as of late. I feel like there were probably a lot of people that were just going on, like, just to spite the cause or whatever, and uh, it's just, I don't know. I, you know, I hope they do the raid tool. I really do. I feel like that's a fine idea, but there's just so much bitching and moaning on Twitch constantly, and Twitch already tries so hard to be, like, a inclusive safe place for everybody it's just funny to sit back and watch how this company who everybody hates right because amazon is evil but they try to do all these nice things for creator foster safe environments and then they still get bitched out by people who are let's not forget literally making money and getting paid to sit on their ass playing video games very very massive first world problem well fellas that is about enough internet for today it was a lot to unpack it really was so you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. As per the usual, I'm sure the fellas will have much to say about all this. And I look forward to reading your responses as always. If you enjoyed the video, then do not forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome, amazing videos just like this. Man, that's crazy, man. There's a lot of stuff going on, bro. <sighs> man, that's wild. But yeah, out of the two people, that mom and the girl that was faking cancer... Uh, I, I don't know, bro. That's kind of hard to say. Pretty hard to say. But, okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, if you like me, subscribe. You know, hit that notification bell. You know the deal. Uh, stay safe, stay smart, and be breezy. Man, people really, really need. Therapy. People really need therapy. And for real, for real, like I said in the beginning, some people really shouldn't be parents. Strap up, bruh. Strap up. Okay? Yeah.